MCE Tables button plugin by Jake Goldman. If you want to follow along on your own website, just log into the admin area of WordPress and navigate to Plugins Add New. This plugin only affects the admin area of WordPress and it has no settings to configure. Once activated, it will extend the MCE editor that comes pre-installed with WordPress and it will give you more options for creating and editing tables on your posts and pages. So here I am on Plugins Add New and I'm going to search for MCE Table Buttons. It should be the first one that comes up. There's only one with that name right now. Just make sure that the author says Jake Goldman. Uh, those are his companies that he belongs with, but make sure that that, that says Jake. We're going to go ahead and install the plugin now. Yes, I'm sure I want to install it. This pop-up right here is, is from our web host, WP Engine, just reminding us to make a backup before we install any new plugins. Uh, we've already done that, so I'll just click no thanks. Now all you have to do to activate it is click this link right here for activate plugin and it's activated. You won't find any settings anywhere. A lot of other plugins, they add settings here in the left-hand side uh, under settings or tools, but for this one, there is no settings to configure. It's very lightweight and it just works out of the box. So I've set up a sample page. What this plugin does, like I said, it only affects the admin area. And here you'll see with the Show Hide Kitchen Sink button, which is this one right here, when you click that, this whole new row of icons has been added. It was not there previously, and this is what the MCE Table Buttons adds for us. To add a new table, you can go ahead and get started. And until you have selected a table here in your WYSIWYG editor, none of these other options will be available. So let's go ahead and add a new table. You choose how many columns and how many rows that you want to make the table. You can always change that later, which we'll go through. But I'm just going to start with a simple table that has three columns, three rows. Let's say you wanted to give the table a class. Let's say you have some styling in your CSS. You can choose one of the predetermined WordPress classes that pull up here for you, or you can click value and you can type your own class in there but that's completely optional. Just leave it blank if you don't have any specific classes. And there's also an advanced tab that lets you do even more things here. I'm not gonna go into these. If you know HTML and you're more advanced, you can come in here and you can set all these settings on your own. So once you're finished uh, customizing everything the way you like it, you click insert and that puts a table in here for you. By default, it looks kind of weird. It's very small, but that's because we don't have any information on our table. So let's go ahead and start filling it out. I'm just gonna put in some fake information, first name, last name, and we'll do website. One thing to note is that I'm not using the tab key to go from cell to cell. Uh, that's often used in programs like Microsoft Excel and other spreadsheet programs. Um, but the reason why we can't do that is because we're on a website, when you hit tab, you will start to tab to these other options here as well as other text fields to fill in. So I'm just using my left and right arrow keys to move back and forth between these cells. And I will put myself in here. And we'll just make up a name and Smith Enterprises. Okay, so here's our table. Now you'll see that our cursor is inside of this table. You'll see all these other options that we have here. Um, one of the things that I'm going to show you guys that's important to do with tables is you'll want to adjust the table row properties. So I put my cursor here in this top row because this is a header row, which is a little bit different than these other two that are more informational, but this is the header. So I'm going to keep my cursor in there and I'm going to click table row properties and I'm going to change the row type from body to header and click update. So now what you'll see is down here, when my cursor is on Dave or John, you'll see T body because that's body information of the table. But now when I'm up here in the first row, you see T head because that's header information. Now there's one thing that we have to do to each individual cell in that 
that first row, and we'll do that with this next button called Table Cell Properties. So here we're just going to change the cell type. It's not data information, but it's actually a header. So we change that and we click Update. You can go ahead and click OK. If you want to get more specific with your table, you can read through that message and, um, and tweak even more of the settings. But for now, to keep it simple, we're just going to change each of these to a header. And you do have to do each one because this is specific to each and every cell. It doesn't update the entire row all at the same time. So now you'll notice here if I'm uh, looking at myself in this body information, you'll see it's TD for table data. However, if I click up here, it's actually TH for table header. So that's a big difference there that you'll want to make sure whenever you're, not all tables are going to have headers, but most of them do. And when they do, that's how you change that information. And another reason why I really like this plugin is because you can very easily insert rows and columns before and after existing ones. So my cursor right now is in this John Smith row. Let's say I wanted to add a row after that. So you hover over this icon for the green row, insert row after, and there it is. And let's say we wanted to put a row before the Sally Johnson row that we just inserted. You can use this icon to insert a row before. You can also very easily remove rows with this delete row. So here we added an empty one. Let's go ahead and remove it. And there it's gone. Um, you can also insert columns as well. So I want to add a column after the website column. And we'll call it city. And Richmond, Virginia. And then we change our mind and we want to delete this column. You can do it very easily again just by removing the column. These last two allow you to merge table cells and then split them. So if I put my cursor down here, let's say I wanted Sally Johnson and Sally's Cupcakes all to be in the same row and not split up into each of these three columns. So it'll just go all the way across and merge these three cells. I'm going to use this button for merge table cells and I'm going to take the three columns and merge them into just that one row and here you go now what it does is it puts all the information right next to each other so you might want to space it out a little bit so that it's more legible um, and then you can do different things with it as well and, and target this information as if it's all in one table cell and then if you ever want to revert back you can use this button to split the merge table cells so it splits it back up, so now you have all three columns again, but it does keep this information all in the first one. So you will have to take that information and put it back in its original columns, like so. That is all that this plugin does. It's a very lightweight, very simple plugin. I love how there's no settings to it, and it allows you to do a lot more with tables. Um, both in your posts and your pages, or any custom post types that you may add to WordPress. That wraps it up for this tutorial on uh, a review of MCE Table Buttons plugin by Jake Goldman. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, shoot us an email, or hit us up on Twitter at WP Smackdown. Thanks for watching, and please check out the other tutorials on our video channel and at WPSmackdown.com.